Hey everyone, welcome back to KZ3D Sparks. Today we're going to be creating a saw blade trap. So I thought it'd be cool to jump back in to our custom dungeon build after our here that we made last couple weeks. So first things first, of course, you want to go ahead and make sure that your units under your scenes tab is set to inches. And then I have the grid floor set to quarter of an inch. So of course, just work with whatever you prefer to. I'll be working inches, but I'm just going to go ahead and hop to a new layer. And you can see that I already have a grid floor square piece here. So if you wanted, you could always bring that over from your dungeon. You can do shift D and just duplicate that, hit M to move that to the layer that you'll be working in. I'm just gonna undo that so I don't have an extra castle tile and get started with our saw blade. So I'm gonna do shift A, mesh, and we're gonna start with a circle. First thing, you'll wanna go ahead and change the vertices to 12 if it's set to anything else. 12 is just what I'm gonna be working in. Of course, you guys can always tweak it later on, but for this tutorial, let's try 12. I'm gonna hit three to go into side view. And we're gonna go ahead and hit align to view. We'll go ahead and rename this. So it's saw blade and we'll just go with three since it's my third one. And we'll just tab into edit mode. Now, since our grid floor is already set, so these are one inch a piece, I'm gonna use that kind of as my guideline in addition to our grid floor or yeah, our grid back here. So for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and size this down. And I want this to be just inside our second out. I think right around here should be good for what uh, we're going to do. Now, of course, that's because I want my saw blade to be about two inches wide. So if you want yours to be smaller, go ahead and size that appropriately. For, but for mine, we're gonna do about two inch. So actually I'll make it a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to go ahead and do E to extrude and we're just going to pull it to the right and you'll notice it's discolored. The shading is like all weird. So we'll want to push this to the left and you'll notice it is shaded properly. So the normals are facing the correct position. I'm going to tab out of edit mode and go ahead to here and we're going to hit geometry to origin. So that way it centers right over this. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to face select mode. And basically what we're going to want to do is grab each individual face and hit E to extrude and just right click to exit out of that. Now, if you grabbed, let's say you grabbed multiple ones, if you did E to extrude, they're all going to come out at the same time and we don't want that. That's why we want to go ahead and do them individually. So go ahead, go around the whole circle, E to extrude and just right click so it stays exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so after you do that, go ahead and select your whole circle. Now, before we move anything, we're going to come down here to our pivot point and change this to individual origins and just hit S and size that way down around here we want it to be smaller than what we want our end result to be so go ahead and just dramatically size that down and then we can go ahead and change this to 3d cursor and size that out so i'm going to make that probably around there so it's a little large you'll notice that our squares did size up so now it's you know set to be a little bit more proportioned for what our saw blade is going to be i'm going to make these a little lo longer actually now to get kind of that curve for the actual saw blade i'm going to do Control r and just left click and right click so it pops right in the middle there so Control r left click right click on all of our Oops, pieces here. Go ahead and reselect those loops. So I'm just doing shift alt right click so I can get all of them here. I'm just gonna hit side view again and just rotate that around to be about there. Looks pretty good. Now, if you want, you guys can go ahead and come over here to our modifier wrench tab. Do you add modifier and do subdivision surface? Now for me personally, I like to go ahead and crank that up to three. Um, but of course, if you guys prefer something else, go for it. Now, what I also want to do is go ahead and do control R and we're going to add in more loops here 
And this is where I'm going to start kind of ignoring these bottom ones here and only focusing on these two just in case they pop above our floor tile and mainly focusing on the top one. So I'm not going to delete these yet just in case if there's any other additional loops we want to add in later and for sizing reasons and stuff, but I'm going to not add in our extra vertices or loops here. Okay, so I want to do control R and add one loop all the way around. And if you want, we can actually do, so I'm going to switch to vertex select mode do A to deselect, Z for wireframe view, B for border select, X, and delete those vertices, and we can add a mirror modifier. Now, when you add a mirror modifier this way, you're gonna notice it doesn't look like anything happened, but that's okay. We're basically just gonna uncheck X, check Z, and we're also gonna check clipping. Now, the other thing is, you'll notice that, well, sometimes it could be a little weird with the subdivision surface, but, we just want to make sure that the mirror is first and then our subdivision surface. Some models are more evident than others, but just, you know, make it a habit to have your mirror on top of your subdivision surface. Okay. So we want to go ahead and start adding in some more details. So I'm going to go ahead and alt right click these front three vertices here. We're going to do R so we can rotate them back. And then we're going to do shift E and sharpen those edges. I'm going to go ahead and alt right click this whole loop here, but I'm going to deselect probably most of it. So we can go ahead and deselect all of these and the ones oops, in the back as well. And we're just getting these set up to be sharpened as well that should be good oh except we don't want these two shift e and sharpen that now we can kind of check that out looking good i kind of want to grab these guys and rotate them to make it a little bit more dramatic and we could even grab these top ones so they're not completely flat. I rotate them a little bit or maybe even size them out. Yeah, that way it's not completely flat and just looks a little bit better. Cool. So next, I want to go ahead and alt right click our loop here and we're going to switch this back to median point. So if we do E to extrude, we'll size that in because if you'll notice, if we size that in while this is still active to 3D cursor, it's going to actually push in our curve and then we have to pull this back out along the X. So instead, we're just going to change this back to median point, E to extrude and size that in so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to size that to about here. E to extrude, size that in to about here, E to extrude, and we're just going to pull that out, E to extrude, Alt M at center. I'm going to do Shift E, and I also want to go ahead and switch to face select mode, do Alt right click to this loop here, front view, do E to extrude, and push this out a little bit too. And I'm going to go ahead and sharpen those and maybe add another detail like that. So if we do like that, E to extrude, push that out and I want it to match the other one. So I'm just going to go Z for wireframe view and then we can sharpen those as well. So that 
is our saw blade. Now, of course, you can go in, start adding more detail if you're interested. But you'll notice that these ones actually did not make it through. So we can go ahead and delete them. So we're gonna grab these guys. Just like that, do X and delete those vertices. Oh, we missed this guy. Now the other thing is we did delete too much, so I'm gonna undo that. And we're gonna deselect these. Now everything is submerged, but I don't want it in the middle of these four squares. I would prefer it being in actually one square. So maybe even just having this as one tile. Um, so we could edit this tile real quick. because so I don't think I have a two set. So we'll just go ahead and edit this one real quick. So I'm just gonna do border select just go ahead and delete those vertices and you'll notice that we have these holes here now and there's also like this extra line here we're just going to go ahead and do x and dissolve that edge because we don't need that there um so we'll go ahead and do these four do f for face these four f for face face that off Now, some of these are triangulated just because they were exported as STLs, so that's why it might look a little funky now. So don't worry too much, it's fine, it's nothing to worry about really. Um, but I just, I don't know, I like to clean them up when I can. Um, but okay, so now it's set to our two square wide and we can go ahead and test out a Boolean. So what I wanna do is actually duplicate this in case if we would need an extra I'm just gonna hide the original apply our modifiers do control a and we're gonna do rotation and scale and control a location so for that we can also do that to our floor tile as well and then we can do add modifier boolean oops change this to union. I'm just gonna go ahead and select on our saw blade. Make sure it looks right. Which it does seem like, oh, you'll notice there's holes here. So no, it's not going to work. So before we even bother with that, we we'll wanna go ahead and delete this. Go back in. And pull this down so it actually gets submerged into our model okay cool so let's try that again do sh shift D apply control a select our new model hit apply Perfect. So you'll notice there's no extra mesh on the inside. It is seamless. So there is our fancy new saw blade trap. So let's go ahead and move that to our first layer and see how it looks. So, I mean, it is on some extra floor tiles, so there's probably some weird clipping going on. But if we ignore that and put that, let's say, over in this hallway, so typically you would just go ahead and move the floor out but for now i'm just gonna overlay it do shift d for a second saw blade because you know why not double up and yeah or you could even oops take one back to trip them up even more and why not go for a third this hallway is real tricky for your players to get through. So you got your spikes in the front and then three saw blades. 
Good luck, fam. Well, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Feel free to post in the comments any requests or questions or concerns, anything like that. Um, other than that, I will see you guys next week. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, I'm, of course, like I said, you can post them in the comments below. But if you want a faster response, feel free to join my Discord. I have a whole channel for Blender help. And again, thank you so much. And I will see you next week.